if you've ever found yourself flying into areas of lowering ceilings and reduced visibility, while having to fly lower and lower to the ground, and had the nagging thought that this just doesn't seem safe, well, there are statistics to back up that nagging thought. Controlled flight into terrain, or CFIT, is responsible for fewer than 5% of all general aviation accidents, yet it's responsible for 17% of general aviation fatalities. In recent decades, these types of adverse events have averaged slightly more than 100 per year in the U.S., resulting in nearly 2,000 fatalities each year. A review of available research concerning this hazard makes it clear that CFIT accidents primarily occur due to a lack of situational awareness, and most often occurs when visibility is restricted by atmospheric conditions or darkness. So the question is, how do we best develop and maintain situational awareness? This is an ongoing process that begins during pre-flight planning activities. Anytime you plan a flight at lower altitudes or in areas with rising terrain, it's critical to conduct a review of maximum elevation figures in the area you'll be flying and to identify any obstacles along your planned route. You'll find these figures on VFR charts as seen here in the Garmin Pilot application. Black dots with elevation figures next to them on VFR charts are spot elevations that should be noted. While we all like to fly direct, there are many times when this will not be the safest route due to terrain. It also pays to preview the chart supplement for the airports out of which you'll be operating. Here, we select the airports icon and then touch the airport code field, where you can enter the code for any airport. On the right side of the airport information page, we select Chart Supplement. This is where you'll find information about obstructions affecting the runways, such as the hills located off the end of the runway shown here. When planning for a VFR flight, a thorough review of current and forecast ceiling and visibility for the entire route is an absolute must. Keep in mind that more than half of CFIT events occur due to continued VFR flight into IMC. While there are regulatory minimums for operation in the variety of airspaces, it's wise to establish personal minimums that are higher. A ceiling that was forecast to be near regulatory minimums could end up being lower as many pilots have discovered the hard way. Even when on an IFR flight, it pays to know the type of terrain you'll be flying over. On low altitude charts, you should take note of the off-route obstruction clearance altitude, referred to as the OROCA, for the quadrants you'll be flying through. These numbers are derived similar to maximum elevation figures on VFR charts but an additional 1,000 feet of buffer is added in non-mountainous areas, and an additional 2,000 feet is added in mountainous areas. To add to situational awareness, IFR pilots can refer to VFR charts for the areas in which they'll be flying. Many Garmin navigators, flight displays, and integrated flight decks can display these charts during your flight so viewing your proposed route on them during pre-flight activities helps to make more effective use of them while en route. Instrument approach charts also contain a great deal of information concerning terrain and obstacles. Selecting the RNAV Runway 1 chart within Garmin Pilot, we first take a look at the top strip, where we can see the touchdown zone elevation and the airport elevation. We can also see a T within an inverted black triangle. This indicates non-standard takeoff minimums, or an obstacle departure procedure is published for that airport. Even when flying VFR, it pays to review ODPs as that will tip you off to a good path out of that airport if you are climb challenged. Let ATC know if you plan to fly an ODP. An A within a black triangle indicates non-standard alternate minimums. 
A snowflake within a black box means that cold temperature altitude corrections are required when the temperature is at or below the one shown next to the symbol. When it's very cold out, altimeters will read higher than actual altitudes. And without correction when flying near terrain, your terrain clearance will be less than expected. If you see either of these symbols, take a close look at the obstacles surrounding the airport. You'll also find point obstacles showing in the plan view of the chart, and terrain will be depicted when the terrain is greater than 4,000 feet above the airport elevation and within the plan view area. If terrain rises more than 2,000 feet within six nautical miles of the airport, that terrain will also be depicted. Another CFIT avoidance feature on the approach chart is the minimum safe altitude or terminal arrival area depiction. These are published for emergency use and show minimum altitudes related to designated locations and provide at least 1,000 feet above obstructions in the designated area. These should be part of any approach briefing. When the ceiling is low, you always want to be ready to conduct the missed approach. Know that procedure before beginning the approach, and it goes without saying that, unless provided vectors for the missed approach, following the published missed approach procedure is critical. If you don't have the runway environment in sight at minimums, and you've reached the missed approach point, begin the missed approach. With an application like Garmin Pilot on your handheld device, your aircraft will appear on the plan view, seen outlined here in blue, which makes monitoring your lateral position on the approach easy and provides for significant enhancement to positional awareness. You should be aware that while ATC does have software that advises them when an aircraft has obstacles in the path of their flight, there are occasions when the controller or the radio frequency in use may be busy and you may not receive a warning in time to do something about it. In some areas, there may not be radar coverage that would inform ATC of your position. While ATC can help in many cases, don't forget that you are the pilot in command and ultimately responsible for avoiding terrain. Okay, now that we've explored some traditional situational awareness enhancing techniques, let's take a look at some technology that can greatly enhance your ability to stay aware of your position relative to obstacles. With a valid GPS signal, many devices can provide positional awareness information. With SBAS, the GPS signal provides for precise lateral and vertical position information that can place you on a moving map and show your relationship to terrain and obstacles. This Garmin Pilot map image shows terrain and obstacle overlay selected on Green indicates terrain from 1,000 to 2,000 feet below the aircraft. Yellow indicates terrain 100 to 1,000 feet below the aircraft. And red indicates terrain within 100 feet below and any terrain above the aircraft. If you are approaching terrain or obstacles, Garmin Pilot provides terrain alerts. If the only glass cockpit you have is a tablet device, then an application like Garmin Pilot along with a source of a valid GPS signal, is the way to go. Garmin also provides for terrain awareness and alerts in several panel-mounted devices, such as the GTN series, G1000 series, and other integrated flight decks. On the GTN, you select Terrain for Display by selecting the Menu button and then Map Settings. On the Map Settings page, you select the Terrain button on the GTN, terrain that is 100 to 1,000 feet below the aircraft shows in yellow, and terrain within 100 feet below and any terrain above the aircraft will show in red. When approaching terrain in your flight path, you will first receive a yellow caution alert. This changes to a red warning alert that would be accompanied by an aural alert of Terrain ahead, pull up. Terrain ahead, pull up. The G1000 NXI brings a whole new level of terrain awareness to the flight deck. This integrated flight deck provides for terrain awareness and alerting on both the PFD and MFD. To select terrain for display on the MFD, select the Map Options soft key on the bezel and then the Terrain soft key. The color scale used here is similar to the Garmin Pilot application, 
with green indicating terrain from 2,000 feet below to 1,000 feet below, yellow indicating terrain between 1,000 feet and 100 feet below, and red indicating terrain less than 100 feet below to terrain above the aircraft. In this system, black is used to depict terrain greater than 2,000 feet below your aircraft. You can see a scale that shows this on the lower right part of the display. As the aircraft approaches terrain or obstacles in the flight path, just as with the GTM, you will see an alert. While the relative terrain view provides an overhead view of terrain and obstacles, with synthetic vision enabled, you will also see terrain and obstacle alerting on the PFD. These forward-looking terrain alerts indicate potential impact areas. Terrain SVT and TOS-B both are capable of providing these alerts, with TOS-B providing an expanded list of potential alerts. Certain of these terrain systems incorporate Garmin's wire-aware obstacle information. With this, high-voltage transmission lines, including those spanning rivers, valleys, and canyons, will be depicted and alerting is provided for potential impacts with wires or supporting towers. Obstacle, obstacle, pull up, pull up. Garmin systems provide easy to interpret terrain and obstacle awareness and alerting features that have the potential to significantly contribute to your situational awareness. But you should keep in mind that these systems are dependent upon databases that may not contain all obstacles. You still need to maintain a visual scan for terrain and obstacles, and as mentioned earlier in this video, develop your situational awareness starting with pre-flight planning, and establish your personal minimums for ceilings and visibility. If the weather doesn't meet your standards, then the best option is to fly on another day. Okay, that wraps up our discussion of ways to reduce the risk of CFIT. Be sure to check out additional information on this subject in the documents that are linked in the description for this video. We encourage you to continue your safety journey by viewing the other videos in the Garmin Aviation Risk Management series. And thanks for flying Garmin.